Hi guys. All right, this is just a pickup of where the other one left off. Um, we are going to finish this right now. So bottom of page 99, here we go. Now in the family room, the rear door opens and Helen steps in. She stands a moment, then sniffs in one deep grateful breath, and her hands go out vigorously to familiar things, over the door panels and to the chairs around the table and over the silverware on the table until she meets Viney. She pats her flank approvingly. Oh, we glad to have you back too, probably. Helen hurries, groping to the front door, opens and closes it, removes its key, opens and closes it again to be sure it's unlocked, grips back to the rear door and repeats the procedure, removing its key and hugging herself gleefully. Aunt Ev is standing in the rear door and a, a relish with, with a relish tray. She bends to kiss Helen's cheek. Helen finds Kate behind her and thrusts the keys at her. What? Oh, do you have keys? She pockets them, lets Helen find them. Yes, I'll keep the keys. I think I've had enough of locked doors too. James, having earlier put Annie's suitcase inside her downstairs, uh, inside her door upstairs and taken himself out of view around the corner, now reappears and comes down the stairs as Annie and Keller mount the porch steps. Following them into the family room, he pats Annie's hair in passing, uh, rather in her, to her surprise. Evening, General. He takes his own chair opposite. Viney bears the empty water pitcher out to the porch. The remaining suggestion of garden house is now gone and the water pump is, unobst is unobstructed Sorry, the remaining suggestion of garden house is gone now and the water pump is unobstructed. It's gonna be important, right? Viney pumps water into the pitcher. Kate surveys the table, breaks the silence. Will you say grace, Jimmy? They bow their heads except for Helen who palms her empty plate and then reaches out to be sure her mother is there. James considered a moment, glances across to Annie, lowers his head and obliges. And Jacob was left alone and wrestled with an angel until the coming of the day. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And the angel said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Amen. And he lifts her eyes suspiciously at James, who winks expressionlessly and inclines his head to Helen. Oh, you angel. The others lift their faces. Helen returns with the pitcher, set it, setting it down near Kate. Viney returns with the pitcher, setting it down near Kate, and then goes out the rear door, and Annie puts a napkin around Helen. It's a very strange grace, James. Will you start the muffins, Ev? It's from the good book, isn't it? Well, of course it is. Didn't you know? Yes, I knew. Hey, I'm Miss Annie, please. Then why ask? I meant it is from the good book, and therefore a fitting grace. Well, I don't know about that. Miss Annie, thank you. There's an awful lot of things in the good book that I wouldn't care to hear be just before eating. When Annie reaches for the pitcher, Helen removes her napkin and drops it to the floor. Annie is filling Helen's glass when she notices it. She considers Helen's bland expression a moment, and then bends, retrieves it, and tucks it around Helen's neck again. Well, fitting in the sense that Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and so is this piggy's. I declare you, J I declare James. <sighs> pickles, Anev. Oh, I should say so. You know my opinion of your pickles. This is the end of them, I'm afraid. I didn't put up nearly enough last summer. This year I intend to... She interrupts herself, seeing Helen deliberately lift off her napkin and drop it again on the floor. She retrieves it, but Annie stops her arm. Reverend looked in at the office today to complain his hens have stopped laying. Poor fellow, he is out of joint. All he can do... Uh, he stops, too, to frown upon the table as Kate, Helen, and Annie, in all turn, all suspended in mid-motion. I've always suspected those hens of what? I think they're papists. Papists. Has he tried? He stops too, following Keller's eyes. Annie's now stop. Now stops to pick the napkin up. James, now you're t pulling my lower extremity. The first thing you know will be. She stops too, hearing herself in the silence. Annie, with everyone now watching for the third time, puts the napkin on Helen. Helen yanks it off and throws it down. Annie rises, lifts Helen's plate, and bears it away. Helen, feeling it's gone, slides down and commences to kick up under the table the dishes jump. Annie comment, uh, contemplates this for a moment, then comes back to Helen's wrists firmly and swings her off the chair. Helen, struggling, gets one hand free and catches her mother's skirt. When Kate takes her by the shoulders, Helen hangs quietly. Miss Annie, no. It's a very special day. It will be when I give in to that. She tries to disengage Helen's hand. Kate lowers hers on Annie's. Please, I've hardly had a chance to welcome her, welcome her home. Captain Keller. Oh, Katie, we had a little talk. Miss Annie feels that if we indulge Helen in these, but what's the child done? She's learned not to throw things on the floor and kick. 
It took us the best part of two weeks, and it's only a napkin. It's not as if it were breakable. And everything she's learned is. Mrs. Keller, I don't think we should play tug-of-war for her. Either give me her, give her to me or keep her from kicking. What do you wish to do? Let me take her from the table. Oh, let her stay, my goodness. She's only a child. She doesn't have to wear a napkin if she doesn't want to on her first evening. And ask outsiders not to interfere. Out, outside? I'm the child's aunt. Will once, will once hurt so much, Miss Annie. I've made all Helen's favorite foods tonight. It's a housecoming party, Miss Annie. Annie, after a moment, releases Helen, but she cannot accept it. At her own chair, she shakes her head and turns back intent on Kate. She's testing you, you realize. She's testing you. Jimmy, be quiet. Jimmy sits tense. Now she's home, naturally she, and wants to see what will happen at your hands. I said it was my main worry. Is this what you promised me not half an hour ago? But she's not kicking now and not learning not to. Mrs. Keller, teaching her is bound to be painful to everyone. I know it hurts to watch, but she'll live up to just what you demand of her and no more. She's testing you. Jimmy, I have an opinion. I think I should, no one's interested in hearing your opinion. I'm interested. Of course she's tested me. Let me keep her to what she's learned and will go on learning from me. Take her out of my hands and it all comes apart. Kate closes her eyes, digesting it. And he sits again with a brief com comment for her. Be bountiful. It's at her expense. She turns to James flatly. Please pass me more of her favorite foods. Then, Annie, then Kate lifts Helen's hand and turns toward her. Annie surrenders. Uh, turns her towards Annie, surrenders her. Helen makes for her own chair. Take her, Miss Annie. Thank you. But the moment Annie rise, rising reaches for her hand, Helen begins to fight and kick, clutching to the tablecloth and uttering laments. Annie again tries to loosen her hands and Keller rises. I'm afraid you're the difficulty, Miss Annie. Now I'll keep her to what she's learned. You're quite right there. He takes Helen's hands from Annie, pats them. Helen quiets down. But I don't see that we need send her from the table after all. She's the guest of honor. Bring her plate back. If she was a seeing child, none of you would tolerate one. Well, she's not. I think some compromise is called for. Bring her plate, please. Annie's jaw sets, but she restores her plate while Keller fastens the napkin around Helen's neck. She permits it. There. It's not unnatural. Most of us take some aversion to our teachers, and occasionally another hand can smooth things out. He puts a fork in Helen's hand. Helen takes it genially. Now, shall we all start over? He goes back around the table and sits. Annie stands watching. Helen is motionless, thinking things through, until with a gleeful, wicked glee, she deliberately flings the fork on the floor. After another moment, she plunges her hand into her food and crams a fistful into her mouth. I think we've all started over. Keller shoots a glare at him, and as Helen plunges her hand into Annie's plate, Annie at once moves in to grab her wrist, and Helen flings out a hand and counters the pitcher. She swings with it at Annie. Annie falls back, blocks it with an elbow, but the water flies over her dress. And he gets her breath, then snatches the pitcher away in one hand, hoists Helen up bodily under the underarm, other arm, and starts to carry her out, kicking Keller stands. Don't get up! Where are you going? Don't smooth anything else for me. Don't interfere in any way. I treat her like a seeing child because I ask her to see. I expect her to see. Don't undo what I do. Where are you taking her? To make her fill this pitcher again. She thrusts out with Helen under the arm, but Helen escapes up the water, up the stairs, and Helen... And Annie runs after her. Keller stands rigid. Aunt Ev is astounded. You let her speak to you like that, Arthur. A creature who works for you. No, I don't. He's staring after Annie when James, on his feet, with shaky resolve, interposes his chair between Keller's path. Let her go. What? I said. Let her go. She's right. Keller glares at the chair and him. James takes a deep breath and then headlong, she's right, Kate's right, I'm right, and you're wrong. If you drive her away from here, it will be over my dead chair. Has it ever occurred to you that on one occasion you might be consummately wrong? Keller stares, at, Keller stares unbelieving, even a little fascinated. Kate rises in trepidation to meditate, to mediate. Captain. Keller stops her with his raised hand. He eyes stay on James's pale face for a long hold. When he finally finds his voice, it's gruff. Sit down, everyone. He sits. Kate sits. James holds onto his chair. 
Keller speaks mildly. Please sit down, Jimmy. James sits and moves. Moveless silence prevails. Keller's eyes do not leave him. Annie has pulled Helen downstairs again by one hand, the pitcher in her other hand, down the porch steps and across the yard to the pump. She puts Helen's hand to the pump handle grimly. All right, pump. She forces Helen's hand to work the handle, then lets go. And Helen obeys. She pumps till the water comes, then Annie puts the pitcher in her other hand and guides it under the spout in the water, tumbling in half into and half around the pitcher, douses Helen's hand. Annie takes over the handle to keep water coming and does automatically what she has done so many times before, spells into Helen's free palm. Water. W-A-T-E-R. Water. It has a name. And now the miracle happens. Helen drops the pitcher on the slab under the spout. It shatters. She stands transfixed. Annie freezes on the pump handle. There's a change in the sundown light, and with it a change on Helen's face. Some light coming into, into it we've never seen there. Some struggle in the depths behind it, and her lips tremble, trying to remember something the muscles around them once knew. Till at last it finds its way out painfully, a baby sound buried under the debris of years of dumbness. Wah, wah. And again, with great effort at effort, wah, wah. Helen plunges her hand into the dwindling water, spells into her own palm. Then she gropes frantically and Helen, Annie reaches for her hand and Helen spells into Annie's hand. Yes. Helen spells into it again. Yes. Helen grab, grabs at the handle, pumps from her water, plunges her hand into it, spurts and grabs Annie's to spell it again. Yes. Oh my dear. She falls into her knees to clasp Helen's hand, but Aunt Helen f pulls it free, stands almost bewildered, and drops to the ground, pats it swiftly, holds up her palm, imperious. Annie spells into it, ground. Helen spells it back, yes! Helen whirls to the pump, pats it, holds to her palm, and Annie spells into it, pump. Helen spells it back, yes, yes! Now Helen is in an excitement. She is possessed, wild, trembling, cannot be still, turns, runs, falls on the porch steps, claps, claps it, reaches out her palm and Annie as it is is at it insistently to spell step. Helen has no time to spell back now. She whirls, groping to touch anything, encounters the trellis, shakes it, thrusts her palm out. Annie, while spelling to her, cries wildly at the house trellis, Mrs. Keller, Mrs. Keller! Inside, Kate starts to her feet. Helen scrambles back to the porch, groping and finds the bell string, tugs it. The bell rings. The distant chimes begin tolling the hour. All the bells in town seem to break into speech while Helen reaches out and Annie spells feverishly into her hand. Kate hurries out with Keller after her. Aunt Ev is on her feet to peer out the window. Only James remains at the table and with a napkin wipes his damp brow. From up right and left, the servants, Viney, the two Negro children, the other servant, run in and stand watching from a distance as Helen, ringing the bell with her other hand, encounters her mother's skirt. When she throws a hand out, Annie spells it. Mother. Keller now seizes Ellen, Helen's hand. She touches him, gestures a hand, and Annie spells it again. Papa, she knows. Kate and Keller go to their knees, stammering, clutching Helen to them, and Annie steps unsteadily back to watch the threesome. Helen spelling wildly into Kate's hand and then into Keller's, Kate spelling back into Helen's hand. They cannot keep their hands off her. They rock her in their clasp. Then Helen gropes, feels nothing, turns all around, pulls free and comes with both hands groping to find Annie. She encounters Annie's thigh. Annie kneels to her. Helen's hand put, pats Annie's cheek impatiently, points a finger and waits. Annie spells into it, teacher. Helen spells it back slowly. Annie nods, teacher. She holds Helen's hand to her cheek. Presently, Helen withdraws it, not, uh, not jerkily, only with reserve, and retreats a step. She stands thinking it over, then turns again and stumbles back to her parents. They try to embrace her, but she's something else in mind. It, has to, it is to get the keys, and she hits Kate's pocket until Kate digs them out for her. Annie, with her own load of emotions, has retreated, her back turned toward the pump to sit. Kate moves to Helen, touches her hand questioningly, and Helen spells a word to her. Kate comprehends it, their first act of verbal communication. And she can hardly utter the word aloud in wonder, gratitude, and deprivation. And so in a, it is a moment in which she simultaneously finds and loses a child. Teach her? Annie turns and Kate, facing Helen in her direction by the shoulders, holds her back, holds her back, and then relinquishes her. Helen feels her way around the yard rather sly, shyly, and then her moving hands touch Annie's skirt. She stops. Then she holds out the keys and places them in Annie's hand. For a moment, neither of them moves. Then Helen slides into Annie's arms and, lifting away her smoked glasses, kisses her on the cheek. Annie gathers her in. Kate, torn both ways, turns from this gesture, from this, gestures the servants off and makes her way into the house on Keller's arm. 
The servants go in separate directions. The lights are half down now, except over the pump. Annie and Helen are here, alone in the yard. Annie has found Helen's hand, almost without knowing it, and she spells slowly into it, her voice unsteady, whispering, I love Helen. She clutches the child to her, tight this time, not spelling, whispering into her hair, forever, and she stops. The lights over the pump are taking on the color of the past, and it brings Annie's head up, her eyes opening in fear, and as slowly as though drawn, she rises to listen with her hand on Helen's shoulder. She waits, waits, listening with ears and both eyes, and eyes both, slowly there, slowly there, and hears only silence. There are no voices. The color passes on, and when her eyes come back to Helen, she can breathe the end of her phrase without fear, ever. In the family room, Kate has stood over the table, staring at Helen's plate with Keller at her shoulder. Now James takes a step to move her chair in, and Kate sits with head erect, and Keller inclines his head to James. So it is Aunt Ev, hesitant, rather humble, who moves to the door. Outside, Helen tugs at Annie's hand, and Annie comes with it. Helen puts, pulls her toward the house, and hand in hand, they cross the yard and ascend the porch steps in the rising light to where Aunt Ev is holding the door open for them. The curtain ends the play. And that's it. I'll see you guys on Friday.